let the church say amen. amen. Obedience to the triune Godhead, to Reverend Dearborn, to Reverend Slaughter, to Sister Green, our first lady. Amen. So glad to have our mother-in-law back with us. Amen. My daughter back with us. God is a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. Hey there, sister. I'll see you. God bless you. We're just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here? Thank you so, so very much. Amen. As Reverend Dearborn would come, Reverend Slaughter would come for our devotion, and then we'll be in the hands of our ministers of music. Amen. 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 Good morning. Every Sunday I come in here, it is, it is definitely a Washington experience. Amen. If I had to rate y'all on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give you a 20. You go. Amen. I read this morning from one of the most learned scriptures of the, the Bible, John 3, 16. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world All right. but that the world through him might, might be saved. Yes, and may God continue to sanctify his holy word. Amen. Amen. Come with a humble spirit, oh gracious Father. Yes, Lord. Oh gracious Father, I thank you for another sunrise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you didn't have to do it, but you did it. Thank you, Lord. Oh gracious Father, you saw me through last night, oh gracious Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh gracious Father, no hurt, harm, or danger come toward you, Lord. Or my family. But oh gracious Father, I thank you that it let me come into the house of worship, oh gracious Father. One more time. Yes. To praise your name, yes. Lord. Yes. The sweetest name that I know. Yes. Oh, gracious Father, that just let me see this day, yes. this hour, yes. this moment, yes. this second yes. gracious Father. Father, well, you didn't have to do this. Oh, yes. Look on each and every family here, oh, gracious Father. Yes. I thank you right now for them. I don't know what they did all last week, this week, oh gracious Father. Some came with heavy hearts, oh gracious Father. Some come with broken hearts. But Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for us, oh gracious Father. Thank you for giving us liberty, oh gracious Father. Your name is sweet as I know, oh gracious Father. On this day, I feel your presence in this place. You moving up and down this aisle. I don't know what this day is going to hold, but Lord, you know. I praise your name. I thank you. I thank you for all that you have done. I thank you for giving me strength. I thank you. Thank you. I need to jump out. But everybody turned the back on me. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, baby. Yes, Lord. I thank you from a church family, Lord. I thank you from a pastor, Lord. I thank you for Reverend Jim for one who is always here with the truth. And many of the best we give your name and praise. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen.
for the scriptures that have been read. Prayers have been praised, songs. There have been song instruments that have been played. Now, Father, as I stand, speak to me and through me. That your word will go forth. That your word will accomplish its purpose. It will never return void. We thank you. In Christ's name. And for his sake we do pray. Amen. With special thanks, the family of Laura Ruby Coach Thomas and Joe Lewis Thomas acknowledge with deep appreciation your kind expressions of sympathy. Let's continue to pray for that family. Give them a hand. God bless you, Sister Carolyn Smith. Amen. We're praying with you. And God continue to strengthen you. And Mama Brooks also and the entire family. God is good. I say God is good. In the book of Psalms. 40. After the message and the invitation, we have a little child to give back to God today. Why don't we just give God the hand that we are here to give a child back to him that he has given to us. Psalms 40, commencing at verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, yes, out of the miry clay, yes. and set my feet upon the rock, Hallelujah. and established my going. Yes. And he had put a new song in my mouth, yes. even praise unto our God. Yes, Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm coming back from this. Amen. Give God a hand clap of prayer. Thank you, Ursus. I'm coming back from this. Many of us have experienced hell. If you haven't experienced hell, Maybe you have caused hell. But all of us have been through some form of hellish activity. And believe it or not, hell is a literal place. Hell is a place prepared for Satan and his demons. And for all of those who have rejected Christ. The word hell in the Greek means Hades, meanings an unseen world. Hell, as we think of it, is a place not yet have been occupied, but is a place waiting for those to come. Satan already knows he's doomed. He already knows that his demons are doomed. But Satan has the mentality by saying, if I'm going down, I ain't going down by myself. <laughs> Revelations 20 and 10 tells us that in hell, the occupants will be the Antichrist, the unbelievers, and false prophets. So hell is a literal place. But when we talk about catching hell, it is symbolically to experiencing some of that hell on earth. Hell symbolizes trouble, backset, setbacks, sickness, distress, domestic problems, financial difficulty, a place where you have been tormented here on earth. And I wonder, is there anybody on the sound of my weak voice can say, Preacher, I've been there. Oh, preacher, I'm there now. It seems like every time I turn around, 
Every text I get is not good news. Every phone call I get is never good news. I'm catching hell from all angles. But here's your praise cue. The more hell you've caught, the more God caught you. I need, now I need somebody to testify on the fifth point of this. I'm caught hell, but God always saw me through. I've been delivered. I, I can't talk to some delivered people in here. Now, before you confess that you've been delivered, you also are confessing you've been through hell. Now, can I ask you again? Can I speak to some delivered people in here? I've been delivered from my circumstances. I've been delivered from my heartbreak. How many have laid awake at night trying to figure out your problems? Don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Don't know how you're going to make it. But seems like out of no way, God just keep on doing. And Brother West, now I understand what the old folks say. He just keep on blessing me, oh. And look, I don't have to have a million dollars in the bank to say he keeps on blessing. I don't have to wear a designer clothes to say he keeps on blessing me. I don't have to drive in 2021 automobiles to say he keeps on blessing me. I, what you mean, Rev? He woke me up this morning. He kept on blessing me. The little food I had on my table, he kept on blessing me. He enabled me to get in my car to drive the church without any harm. He just keeps on But regardless of what you're going through now, yes, you've got to have the mentality that I'm coming back from this. It may sadden me now, but I'm coming back from this. It may have placed me in an area in my life I really don't want to be. But don't look at me and laugh because I'm in the pit. Don't look at me in my situation as to say I'm going to always be here. I want to let you know I'm coming back from this. I wish I had somebody to testify. Now I need to talk to another group. I need to talk to a group this morning that's in something that you don't care to be in. But you don't have no choice because you're already in it. Let me say it again. You're in something that you really don't care to be in. But you're in it because you don't have no choice because you're already in it. But then while people are looking at you while you're in it, and while they're looking, you can tell them, look, this is not final. I'm coming back from this here. Now, can you praise God while you're in it? Don't wait till he deliver you. I want you to praise God while you are in it. Wait a minute, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm speaking to the hearing impaired. I wish I knew sign language that you can understand what I'm saying. You're in it. Let me, let me, let me bring it up. You're in it. You don't see no way out of it, but you trust God enough and you can praise him while you're in it because the same God that allowed me to get in it will be the same Lord that will deliver me from it. Hey, some dispute when this psalm was written. Some scholars believe and think that it had been written during the time David was running from Saul. Some scholars believe that it was written during the time when the rebellion of his son Absalom was against him. But whichever situation it was, it was a dark time in David's life. Yes, yes. David felt trapped in helplessness and hopelessness. Well. But even in his distress, he knew where his help comes from. Oh, now, it's one thing to be in distress and don't know where your help is. Oh, but it's another thing to be in distress and still know where your help comes from. Oh, we always say he shows up on time, and that sounds good. But for Roger, he showed up in time. Just when I was at the brink of giving up, he showed up. How many can testify this morning that I was almost
stones at the edge of the cliff, but I didn't jump off. I had the white flag in my hand, but I just didn't wave it. I even got up this morning and put on my church clothes. Didn't feel like coming, but I came anyway. And can I help you when you the, when the devil is on your trail on Sunday morning, you hurry up and get to church. Because God got something he wants you to hear. I don't know about you, but there have been times when I couldn't find my socks. I put my shirt on, waste coffee over it. Satan was trying everything possible to keep me from going. But when I went anyway, I knew God had something for me to say. He, he wanted to tell me, son, it's going to be all right. He wanted to tell me, I know you're in a dark place, but the light is just around the corner. I want to encourage somebody who's in that place right now and you can't see your way through. Why don't you just praise God anyway? Why don't you wave your hand in the sanctuary anyway? Because look, he sits high and he looks low. I know where my help comes from. Laugh at me if you want to. Ridicule me because I'm in a dark place. But I'm coming to tell you I'm coming back from this. There's power enough in God for the weakest. Grace enough in God for the unworthy. My brothers and sisters, David was a man after God's own heart. David had done wrong in the eyesight of God. David had blood on his hands. Yes. A man after God's own heart. Yes. But David done wrong in the eyesight of God. Yes. David had blood on his hands. Yes. And don't you look too down at David. Yes. You ain't all of that in the bag of chips yourself. Yes. You can sit here prim, proper, and correct like you've been saved all your life. But you know well just what you did last week. Don't you act like you got some kind of divine amnesia that you forgot how you lied on somebody last week. Don't sit here like you so holy you forgot how you gossiped about somebody last week and have the nerve to come in God's house and lift up your nose at certain people. Some hands you shake and some hands you pass by because you got pickers and choosers who you want to deal with. But then you say, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. But then God calls you and tells you, how can you love me whom you have not seen and hate your brother who you see every day? He said, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Look, we have been through a pandemic. It's time to cut all this foolishness out about who you want to deal with. Who? Look, I so, I'm so glad that God dealt with me. David is not in the class by himself. No, no, no. We all have been there. Yes, sir. We all have disappointed God one way or another. Yes, but the reason why I'm able to praise him, remember all, because he forgave me. Let me say it again. He forgave me. Maybe they ain't good enough for you. Let me say it again. He forgave me. But well, let me put it this way. He looked beyond my thoughts. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that's biblical correct. He saw my thoughts. He didn't look beyond them. He saw them. But he still gave me what I needed. Can I say it again? That song sound good. He looked beyond. No, he didn't. He saw what I did. But grace. But grace. <laughs> Watch this. Let's get into the text. David now is in this distress mode. He's in a dark place. And David in verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. The first thing we have is delay. Let me say it again. We have delay. He waited on God, but at the moment, it seemed as though God wasn't doing anything. He prayed to God, no answer yet. But he says, I waited patiently 
upon the Lord. God doesn't move as quickly as he would desire God to move. But he said, I've learned to wait. And in my wait, I experience delay from God. Now here's your praise cue. Delay is not denial. Just because God delayed your request doesn't mean he has denied your request. Because we are praying for things we really don't need at this moment. But God is going to give it to you just when you needed it the most. So if you're still waiting on your stimulus and it hasn't gotten here yet, keep waiting. Because it's going to show up when you needed it the most. See, if you would have gotten it when you wanted it, the casino would have got it all. God is going to wait till your bills pile up and it's going to show up right on the ground. I'm a living witness. I never forget that we had a little blue fold. And my late income tax came in in the early 90s, Brother West. And it was $1,500. And I'm a lot of money back then. I'm telling the wife and family, oh, we finna ball. We finna go out. We, we finna have a good time. And on the way, Brother Sap, to pick it up, the car died. Had to call my mama, come pick it up. Put the car in the shop. And it was $1,200 to get it through. I started telling my wife, kid, we're going to catch the bus for a little while. But watch this. I was angry. I was upset. Because I waited for this for so long. And as soon as I did it, the car broke down. But then right in the Holy Spirit started working with me. God told me, he said, Roger, I know you're upset. But I held that car up for you long enough. Till the money came in and it fixed. I didn't let it fall on you and you ain't have no way to fix it. I held it up long enough for you. Till the money came in to get it fixed. Oh Lord. But I was still in a little rebellion state. I'm going to be real with you. Even though the Holy Spirit told me that, I said, God, couldn't you just have held it up a little while longer? <laughs> David in the text is delayed by God. But he says, in my delay, I am going to wait patiently. <sighs> I'm asking this all-knowing God, he sees me. He knows my distress. He knows the dark place I'm in. And he's not delivering me yet. But I'm still going to wait. The word wait in the English means to stay in a place until an expected event happens. Y'all just miss it. To stay in a place until an expected event happens. Now, that's the English translation, but in the Greek, pre the word is two words. In a nutshell, it means to abide, to tarry, to continue to be present, to last and endure until what you're waiting for come to pass. All right, all right. Rev, uh, what? In layman's term, keep coming to church. Layman's term, keep praising God. Layman's term, keep trusting God. But Rev, you don't know how long I've been waiting. When you've been waiting this long, wait a little while long. Now watch this. While you're waiting, you've got to learn to worship while you wait. Quit complaining and sending out invitations to your pity party. Worship while you wait. Why do I worship while I wait? Because the particular thing that I'm waiting on may have not arrived, but God still has blessed me in other areas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. David says, I waited patiently. 
patiently on the Lord. Uh -huh. That gives him the term of being in the hospital room. You get that. You give your information out. You let them know what's wrong with you. Yes, sir. And they say, go sit out. And wait. Let me let, watch this. Let me, let me back it up for you. You go to the hospital. You don't really want to be there because you know what's happening in America. We got to all be dead before we go to the hospital. And you, you don't really want to be there. And then when you get there, you give the lady or the mayor all of your information about what's wrong with you, what you're dealing with. They said, okay, we got you. Go wait. I ain't come here to wait. I come here to be seen. But you wait anyway. And you hear other people, names being called. You get to looking at your watch. And what really gets you when somebody comes after you and they get called before you. You put your Bible down for a while. You don't walk with that woman and talk about Jesus. I've been here for hours. And don't let that person be right that went before you. You're going to act a plumb fool. But little do you know their situation is more dire than yours. And they have to jump on it right away. This is where I want to get you. Just like you go to the hospital and you tell them everything. And they tell you to wait. That's how it is with God. You go to God and you tell him everything. You pour out your heart to God and God said, okay, wait. You see other folk being blessed around you. Other people being blessed with sometimes the same thing you need, but God's still telling you to wait. And here's a rejoicing thing, Sister Wanda. If God is blessing my neighbor, then he's in my neighborhood. And if he's in my neighborhood, one of these days he's going to stop by my house. I just have to wait till it's my time. And if you wait long enough in the doctor's office, one of these times your name is going to be called. How many can testify and say, I've waited and I've waited. I've seen other folk being blessed, but one day he called my name. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. He said he inclined. Inclined means have the tendency to do something. God hasn't done it. But here's your praise cue. He has the tendency to do it. And what makes me wait is because the idea he has the tendency to do it. That means he's going to do it on his own terms. And when he does it, it's going to be a blessing for me. David says, I, I waited on the Lord. Watch this. Just because he delayed you, uh -huh. don't deny him. All right, now. That's it. Can I say that again? Yeah. Just because he delayed you, don't you deny him. All right. Just because God has delayed my request doesn't mean I need to walk in church with my arms. <laughs> Just because my request is on delay doesn't mean I get mad at other people because they are praising. Well, well, get all upset because they're standing on their feet praising God. Well, and you're angry because your request is on delay. Well, baby, let me tell you something. Sometimes you can be so focused on what you want, well, well, you overlook that God has given you what you need. Well, 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 mm. Let me move on. Y'all getting itchy? <laughs> delay. But then here's the second D. He finds deliverance. Oh, yeah. He brought me up, verse 2, out of the horrible pit. Out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my going. And put me out of he took me out of the pit. Now watch this. It was a pit that David got himself in. Preacher didn't put him in there. Deacons didn't put him in there. He put his own self in there. 
But the same gracious God. Come on now. Got him out of it. Quit going around lying and blaming everybody else for where you are in life. Oh, it's they fault. It's no, it come a time. David said, when I was a child, I spit as a child. I did things like a child would do. But when I became a man, I put away childish sin. It's a shame grown people walking in church with pacifiers. You need to be eating meat by now. 80 years old and still got a pacifier. And cry because you can't get it every time you want it. David says, now in my delay, I waited enough. Now God has delivered me. He grabs me out of this pit. And grabs me out of my clay is mud that holds you. David said, not only did he bring me out the pit, but he released what was holding me down there. Some of us want to get out of the pit, but it's something holding you down there. And can I share this? Can I throw this in the gumbo and stir it up for you? Quit trying to please everybody. Quit trying to make everybody happy with you. Quit carrying your feelings on your shoulder. Somebody passed by you and didn't speak and then you going all crazy. The pastor get up and call names and he miss you. He don't care for me like he care for everybody else. Baby, it's not about your name. It's about God's name. David said he took me out of this thing. Let me move on now. He not only was delayed, he found deliverance, released from God, but then thirdly, he found delight. Right. Look what he says in verse 3. And he put a new song hey. a new one. in my mouth. Yeah. Even praise unto the Lord. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is where I want to get you. Uh -huh. Look what David says. He put a new song uh -huh. in my mouth. He put even praises in my mouth. Uh -huh. People will see me praising God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Watch this. And know what I've been through. Yes, and they will begin to trust God themselves. All right. That's why I got a problem with folks who say don't take all of that to praise God. Something wrong with you. Something seems wrong with you. David said when he brought me out of this thing, I started praising so loud that everybody saw what was going on. And then when they saw me praising God, the one that was in the pit said, well, I'm going to trust the same God that brought him out of it. I wish I had somebody to testify. Can, can somebody just get loud for God right now? Can, can, can somebody just get loud for him right now? Matter of fact, won't you get on your neighbor's nerve that's on the pew with you? Just... Make them frown at you. Just get loud. But preacher, I don't know how to get loud. Think about that time you should have been dead but God brought you out. Why don't you just put that new song in your mouth and praise him because he is worthy. Yeah. Oh yeah? David say yeah. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to praise him. That's why he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. That his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Because he's worthy of my prayer. God delayed me. But I waited on him. He delivered me. Now I delight in him. And I don't mind Mount Zion telling you, my God is able. I said, my God is able. Or when I during football season when I would watch my saints and when I would see my saints score a touchdown you hear thousands of people in the stadium screaming hollering because Drew 
made another touchdown. And if I wasn't in the stadium riding, I was at home hollering. And don't y'all look at me like that. If whoever your team is, you holler for them. And the problem I have with some of us who say it don't take all of this to praise God. Now, here you are in a stadium. Here you are at home. Hollering and screaming because a piece of leather is thrown across the field. And the man that catches the leather run across the goal line and the referee do this. Then you scream and we holler. Let me say it again. We even call the names. Go on, Drew. Come on, Michael Tom. Come on, Camaro. Now you call in their name and they don't even know who you are. But you're still calling their names at the top of your wall. Now, Drew Brees didn't put food on my table. But we still call his name. Drew Brees didn't heal your body. But you still scream and holler his name. But uh, when I say Jesus, you gonna tell me it don't take all of that. Drew Brees didn't hang on no cross. Drew Brees didn't shed no blood. As a matter of fact, Drew Brees have retired. And Drew Brees is gone about his business. He doesn't care that you're hungry. He doesn't care if you're naked. Drew Brees don't even know your name. But one thing I love about Jesus, he never retires. He sits high and he looks low. And every time I hear that name, it does something to me. Every time I hear that name, it does something to me. Let me help you out. Imagine now we're in a dome. And uh, we're on the field of play. And uh, every time you cross the goal line, that's the Lord giving you another blessing. The referee raises his hand and he shout. Well, let me show you one touchdown this morning. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He healed your body. He put money in your pocket. He gave running in your feet. He put joy in your heart. Now if you're not ashamed on him, and if you feel that you scored a touchdown, why don't you stand up if you're physically able and say, Lord, I thank you. I've been through hell and high water. I've had to cry sometimes. People lie on me, put your name on the highway. But you kept on leaning and depending upon God. Somebody had counted you out. Somebody said you will never amount to anything. But look at you now. You held on to God's unchanging hand. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm going to keep on waiting. Even with tears in my eyes, I'll keep on waiting. I don't know how the Lord is going to make a way, but I know he's going to make a way somehow. Is there anybody here that has an any way praise? I don't have the blessing I want, but I'll praise him anyway. He hasn't delivered me yet. But I'll praise him anyway. They still lying on you. They still calling you everything but a child of God. But I'll praise him anyway. I've got help in my family. But I'll praise him anyway. My change is strange. My money is short. But I'll praise him anyway. He's worthy to be praised. Is there anybody 
with all power that we see. with them first, that they would know what they are doing. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise for them. God bless. And we have a little child that's here to be Christian. Amen. Amen. We would accept the parents and the godparents. All of those who've been designated to look over this baby's life, that we would come down to the altar. Amen. Amen. And as they're coming, church, please pray for Sister Nettie Belvin. She lost her sister, not lost, but her sister transitioned. And we'll get back with you on a date. You're looking at Thursday or Friday. So let us pray for Sister Nettie Belvin, Sister Yolanda Burns, and that entire family. Amen. 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 Normally, I would take the baby in my hands due to the pandemic. We will not do that. But we can still bless this child. Amen. Amen. Little Casey, I've heard a lot about it. God bless him. He's starting off wrong. He's sleeping during my sermons. He got a clean book. God bless you. He wasn't by himself. There's plenty of them out there. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this child. First of all, Father, we thank you for giving this child life. Now, Father, we are asking for direction. And you have touched hearts of those that they will surround this child and give the child the proper direction. Oh, Father, we thank you. As you have given the child to us, we now turn around and give the child back to you. Father, we ask that you just hold these godparents, these parents, these grandparents in the palm of your hand. Give them the word and instruction to guide them. The father, Barack Obama was once a baby. Martin Luther King was once a baby. You use these men to encourage us. And I believe us giving this child back to you, you will use him to encourage me. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. The godparents, where are you? 
I charge you before God in this congregation that you will raise this child for the best of your ability in the knowledge of God. Heaven forbid, heaven forbid if something would happen to these parents that you will step in and rear this child, raise this child as your own. To care for They shouldn't have to wait till you call. You should bring. I charge you before God and this company that you will do this. And if you accept this charge, say I will. Thank you. Parents, with parents. Okay. And this is something very important. This is where a lot of parents fail with their child. You don't get God parents just to say you got them. You got to allow them to interact with this child's life. Even if y'all have a disagreement that has nothing to do with that child. You stood before God and you said you wanted them to be the God parents. You have to let them interact with this child. Not saying you don't, but I have to give you this charge. So I charge you before God and this congregation that you will allow these God parents to get into this child's life. That this child will be raised to respect these two just as much as they respect you. If you accept this charge, say, I will. Oh, come on, you got it. Okay, all right. God is good. At this time, we normally would kiss the baby, but I'm going to let y'all do it. Everybody turn around. assigned for us to do. We have given this child back to you. We have charged both parent and God parents that they are now responsible for bringing this child in the knowledge of you to be grown in the knowledge of you. That they will be examples for this child. That he would love all of them the same and give them all the same respect. We thank you in Jesus' name. For his sake we pray. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. All right. Glyph Case and Flanagan, that's right. All right. He just went to the DMV and he got his driver's license. Christmas certificate certified Casey Flanagan was dedicated to the Lord on the 11th day of April 2021 at the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Roger L. Green, Sr. Pastor. Sister Sarandon, we do have copies of that to pass out to everyone that they would have it with themselves. Give God a hand clap of praise. We are worthy to be praised. God bless you and God forever keep you is our prayer. That child, that young man, is at a perfect age now for you to start raising him up. You can't raise a child at 16. Oh, I want to say something. You want to say something now? I want to say this morning, that song you're singing, God is awesome. I know he's the awesome God. When her... When Hurricane Laura came through Pineville, we were sitting at the table, me and my daughter, and the pastor was watching through the window. He said, we're going to have to get up and get out of here after a while. And I was sitting there with my slippers on, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, get up and go put your shoes on. So I got up and my daughter too. And before I could get in the room to put my shoes on, I heard a noise. And it was the tree that come through the house that fell right where we were sitting. <laughs> I say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
My mother don't say much, but when she says she, she packs a wallet. I thank God for your mother-in-law. For Mount Zion, thanks God for you because you don't forget nobody's birthday. And I thank God for you. Yeah, God blessed us that day. Two trees went through our house right where we were sitting. But we alive. Yeah. And you see why I'm out of there? God is as we get ready to leave this place, but never the presence of God. Remember, your delay is not denial. Keep waiting in the midst of delay. God will deliver you. And once he delivers you, delight in him for what he has done for you. Let us stand. Because you spoke to us this morning. Now, Father, in the midst of my waiting, I know what to do now. Just praise you anyway. The day will come when you will give me the deliverance that I need. Now, may the grace of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, with the rest rule abide henceforth and forevermore. Lord, bless the offering that is about to be given. Bless the tithes that have been given. In Jesus' name. And the church say, Amen. Ah. Please be seated. Please, everyone, be seated. Be seated. We have to be dismissed by rows, by the urshers, for safety reasons. For safety, please, baby, be seated. For safety reasons, we have to be dismissed by the urshers that we don't we don't come up. Okay. Offering is to be given in the bucket in the back. I know this is maybe a little lengthy process, but for safety precautions, we have to do this. We have to do this. On the 30th, we would do the Johnson & Johnson vaccine again. We had it on yesterday. We had a great number come out. If you have not been vaccinated, please, do you all are wrestling with it, pray about it, and ask God to show you what you need to do. Amen? As they dismiss, give God a hand clap of praise. 